Oh well, watercolor always has its own way. You can do as much planning as you want and then it's going another road. Hello everybody, I'm Christina Jurich. I'm a German watercolor artist and I'm showing you a little sketch today which I have done in France on vacation and I'm painting it today in watercolor for you. And uh, in addition to that, I got a couple of new uh, watercolor pigments and I'm trying them out today for the first time. So I am also anxious to see what's going to happen. I'm using Schmincke colors for a lot of years already and I'm curious about these new colors, how they react with my old colors and what they're going to do in my little painting. Um, these new pigments I'm using, transparent green and Pitalo Sapphire Blue, which is very, very strong. Kinacridon Gold and Kinacridon Margenta, very strong pigments. And the Cobalt Azure. I'm very much looking forward to this one. It's very new. <laughs> so I'm showing you the little sketch, which I have done on location. There you can see different formats because I didn't know which one I'm going to paint and so I tried out different versions. And on location I didn't do a watercolor in color, so just the value sketches. And I will work from those now. And I did another little one because um, this one here I liked quite a bit, but it was missing a little bit on the top. I wanted to show more trees here, so I did another one. And I was pleased with this, so this is the composition and the value sketch I'm going to use for my watercolor. In the value sketch, I find solutions for my composition. If uh, after four versions I'm not happy, I don't find anything, I take another subject. So no start without a working value sketch. I got two watercolor pots, one for clean water and one for dirty water. There is no water on it now. There is still paint on my brush. So I take more water. You know that water reflects what is around it. So when I have a cobalt azure in my sky, I should also have it in my water. I try to get some reflected light here. So I'm taking a bit of the Pitalo Sapphire Blue. It's really strong. And I get a little bit of Kinacridon Magenta. Just to get a little bit of purple in here. And then I need Kinacridon Gold to make it a bit greenish. It's still wet. The background wash of the sky is still wet, so it should give me a nice soft edge. And now I can vary the colors a little bit, so I'm not having the same green all over. A bit more greenish, a bit more bluish, a bit more purplish. And I try to vary the edge of the trees on the back. And this is a nice about a flat brush. You can put one color here and another color there. And when you turn it, then you have both pigments appearing. Now everything is wet and I need the hairdryer to dry it a little bit before I can continue my journey. I just went over all the trees, what I have in the foreground. I ignored them when I painted the background because the background goes all the way through and the foreground trees will be a lot darker so it doesn't matter. I can just go straight over them. Now I need a color that is a lot denser, a lot thicker because I have to get darker and I have to get in the middle ground. Kinacridone Gold which is a nice warm yellow and the strong blue, I'll be careful with this, it's really strong. And here I can also vary. I can put a little bit more yellow, a little bit more blue, or I can also put a little bit of magenta in there 
for a little exon. Let, let's try and just sort and see what happens. And I know that I need a little bit more water. It's better to start with less water and to add more than to have too much water in the beginning. And now you can see I use the texture of the paper to get the leaves of the trees. And it is very important to leave some holes in those leaves for the birds to fly through. Change the form of these patches of leaves. Here you can see if I have more water, I lose the texture. I always look at my sketch, which is very important for me. It's like my GPS, my road map, that I know where to go. I leave the color on this little brush here and I'll take another brush which has a very long point and I'm going for the trunks so I take a bit of uh, bird sienna for the brown and a little bit of blue should darken it down and always when I use two different pigments like uh, burnt sienna and the blue, I can vary between the two. You can get a pigment like sepia, which is already a dark brown, but this is just one brown. And when you mix two colors, you have the whole range between the two of them, which makes it a lot more interesting. The sketch is gone, so it's good that I have my plan here. This is a nice brush because I can do very thick strokes and I can do very thin strokes with it. And as you can see, I get around the foliage now. Because we have trunk, we have patch of leaves, we have trunk, we have patch of leaves, we have trunk, patch of leaves, and so on. So it's much easier to do the leaves before and the trunk after. Before this dries, I do some scratching with a palette knife to get some texture to the trunk. And to put this into the ground, right away, a bit of grass. It's still the same mixture, it's Kinacridon gold with blue. And here and there, a little bit of magenta. Very little water, lots of pigment, straight from the tube. It's very moist, very soft. So I got a couple of poles there, which I can scratch out now. It's still moist. Tick, tick. Ah, too dry there. I can put a little bit of grass in here. Also here, I changed the color a little bit. You see the gold, you see the blue, always in different amounts. And it's missing a bit of the magenta here. Let's go over to the left side. This blue is really beautiful and really strong. A little bit just does the job. If I get too much, it will be a symphony in blue. So, and I got the little passage here where this little figure can go over. Um, I can paint him, I can leave him out, but I think I will put him in. He does add a lot of interest here to this little section. No, this brush cannot do it. Can you do it? Yes, he said yes, that's his job. I always talk with my brushes and ask them if they can do the job. And if they say no, I'll take another one. And he will get a little blue shirt. It's just a little figure. I don't need a face or anything. Two legs. And maybe a little head. Now that's gonna be tiny. Check. Okay. And maybe he's gonna go fishing, so he needs a fishing rod. 
and because I'm right-handed and I can just do this fine line in one direction very comfortably, I'll turn my painting. That is much easier than if I try to bend myself in an awkward position where it doesn't work very well. So, the reflections. Where's my flat brush? Over here. Now I know what's up and I know what's reflected below. I'm not doing a lot of reflection, not to distract from my focal area here. Just a couple of brush strokes will do. Same color, like the leaves at the top. Don't say too much. The person looking at your painting still needs a little bit of fantasy to fulfill the story. And my little figure, just a little bit. So I forgot to scratch some grass in here. It's still a little bit moist, but don't worry. In case it's already dry, you just take a little bit of clean water, re-wet it carefully, wait a couple of seconds, and there you go. Scratching is a lot of fun because it's easily overdone. It's even a rhyme. Okay, and then you have to know when to stop at the right moment. Um, if some of these leaves are not so nice, you're not so happy with them, you can splash a little bit. You should know your brush, how it's splashing, because sometimes you get those splashes everywhere, but not where you want them to be. If you've never done it before, it's better to practice it on a separate sheet than on a painting that's fairly good already. That's it. Don't overdo it. Now I took the masking tape off. That gives us right away a nice little frame around the little watercolor painting. And I'll show you once more what I used. The one inch flat, half inch flat. And this is uh, from a German company, from a little uh, brush company here in Bechhofen, which is very, very old. And yeah, this, this little guy here, which did the little figure and my rigger. That was about all I used. And of course, it was fun to use the new pigments that I got from Schwinky here. Yeah, it's uh, once in a while, it's nice to get something new to get out of the routine and just try new things. Then you stay in motion. So I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time. Bye.